Welcome students to lesson seven of the course deals with the Christian family, marriage and home. Lesson seven will deal with duties of a wife. And this lesson will enable you to explain the biblical view of the wife, identify her position in the family, and describe ways in which she makes the home a happy home. And of course, as you've been studying these last two lessons, it may have prompted you to do some personal soul searching. And this lesson, as well as the ones that follow, will also prompt you to do more. Because building a marriage that lasts and a home that is happy is like tending a garden. It requires constant attention. So we ask that you continue to pray for families, continue to pray for your spouse, that God will strengthen and bless them. And we pray especially for unsaved spouses. Now let's take a look at our lesson plan where we will see our introduction on pages 112 through 113 of your study guide. And we're going to begin with a group discussion. If you're in a group setting, you can uh, break down into groups of threes and fours. If you're studying independently, you can do this exercise alone. I want you to make a list of what you consider to be the four most important duties of a wife. Do not refer to your study guide while you're doing it. But this is just your idea of the four most important duties of a wife. And while you are discussing and coming up with your ideas, I want you to draw two columns on a writing surface. One column place a W for women, and the other column place a M for men. And after you write down your list, if you're in a group setting, compare the list of the women's ideas and the men's ideas of what's the most important duties of a wife. And I also like to remind you as you do this exercise that God, our Creator, established the duties of a wife based on His intimate knowledge of the needs of both men and women. So let's see the first objective of our lesson under the heading, To Love Her Husband. You'll see this on pages 114 through 118 of your study guide. And this first objective asks us to identify the basic elements in the marriage relationship that will protect it in difficult times. So under that section, we see that one of the duties of a wife is to love and respect her husband. I want you to take a look at Ephesians chapter 5 verse 22 and compare it to 1 Peter chapter 3 verses 1 through 6. Now there's also a visual aid for this part of our lesson. If you're studying in a group, your instructor will distribute a copy of the visual aid. If you're studying independently, we will post it to your student account or we will send it to you directly. So as you compare those two scripture verses that I've given you and you look at the visual aids, I want you to go over what submission does not mean in these two scriptures, first uh, Ephesians 5.22 and 1 Peter 3.1-6. through 6. I want you to discuss and think about what submission does not mean in those verses. And then I want you to look at the session later on about what submission does mean. Now, as you look at that part of your lesson and those scripture verses, I want you to observe that though Paul was addressing women married to believing husbands, and Peter was addressing many women married to unbelieving husbands, their instruction is the same. Both use the word submit. 
even though the reasons why he gave for submitting were different. Let's take a look at them closely. One of the things we see for Paul, submission is an aspect of the Christian couple's mutual submission, which is commanded in verse 21. Mutual submission unto one another as unto the Lord. Now for Peter, submission is a means of winning over, without words, an unbelieving husband or wife. I want you to observe that a wife tends to try to convert her husband by arguing, preaching, demanding, or coercing him. Rather, Peter says she should demonstrate Christ's love for him through her own obedient love to him. You see, this approach also applies to parents and their unbelieving children. I also want you to note that wives, following the biblical pattern of the Old Testament women, in maintaining holiness, will do what is right and not give way to fear. You will see an example of this in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 6. In other words, they will trust God to shield them from harm should their husbands mistreat them. At this point, I want you to take a look at your visual aids. And I want you to go over what the visual aid says is what submission does mean. Previously, we looked at it for what submission does not mean. Now, let's take a look again at the visual aid and look at the section that says what submission does mean. And here I like to emphasize the two reasons for submission. One, to have order in the home. And second, to be a witness of the bride-bridegroom relationship between Christ and his church. And I want you to look at Ephesians chapter 5, verse 33, and recite that verse under that section. So the first duty of a wife is to love her husband by loving and respecting him. The second part of this lesson talks about a duty of the wife is to be faithful to him. So let me explain that these questions may arise. What if my husband does not change? How long am I obligated to endure an unhappy marriage? Well, students, I want you to know that being married to an unbelieving spouse can be extremely difficult. In some cases, wives seek to divorce their husbands on the grounds that they are not compatible. This can also be the case if you marry a believing spouse with whom you are not on one accord. Now again, let's have a group discussion if you're in a group setting. And if you're individually, I want you to look at the exercise sheet for this lesson, which your instructor will distribute if you're in a group setting and will send to each student who's studying independently. And as you look at the exercise sheet for this lesson, I want you to read 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 10 through 17, and then I want you to answer the questions on the exercise sheet. And as you answer these questions, I want you to think about the biblical view of divorce, and then refer to the answers at the end of your lesson plan for lesson seven to see how your answer relates to the answers that the lesson gives. And while we're here, let me explain that faithfulness calls for love of a special kind, the kind that Christ exhibits toward us, where we see in Romans 5 and 8, which says, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. You see, God calls the wife to love her husband even when he is unwilling or unable to respond to her love because of sin. 
And remember, sin manifests itself in a marriage relationship in selfishness. Because a person preoccupied with self, that is self-pity and self-anger, is unable to give or to respond to love. So faithfulness to one's unbelieving or backslidden spouse calls for the fruit of the Spirit. It calls for God's grace. It calls for intercessory prayer on behalf of the beloved. And this is true for both men and women, husbands and wives. So second, to be faithful to your husband. Our second objective in the lesson is to make the home a happy home. You'll see this on pages 118 through 121 of your study guide. Where we see the second objective for our lesson is to describe how the wife can make her home a happy one for her husband, for herself, and her children. And the first way the lesson explains that she can do this is by being an example in word and deed. Here I want you to read Proverbs chapter 31, verses 10 through 31 where you will observe that what is described here is not possible without the Lord's help, especially when there are tensions caused by an unbelieving spouse or rebellious children. We need to understand, students, that all God acts is that we do our best in a given situation. Then he will give us his best, and that will be enough. For God's grace is sufficient for us. Now, the lesson asks us to think about examples of godly women that you may know, who are examples in word and deed. And think about some examples from the Bible or your own experience of godly women who are good examples in word and deed. Second thing that the, a wife can do to make the home happy is by being a good homemaker. I want you to identify ways that a woman can be a good homemaker and write down your responses. Think about the added complexities involved in being a good homemaker when one has to help earn a living also out of the home perhaps. How complex and more demanding that may be. And I also want you to think of an illustration of someone who is a good homemaker, can manage well her household her husband, her children, and any other responsibilities both in and outside of the home. A third way that a wife can make her home a happy home is by careful spending. So I like to comment that in this area the wife should exercise trust in God for adequate provision and not give way to anxiety. She can laugh at the days to come, Proverbs chapter 31 25 says so I want you to think about some practical ways of saving money for your household ways that you can cut back or cause things to go further it's it's great for both the husband and wife to be good stewards but usually the wife assumes the responsibility of caring for the matters of the home so think about some practical ways of saving money in order to help make your home a happy home. The third section of our lesson for Objective 3 talks about to love and train the children. Now, of course, some of these things are both the responsibility of the, the husband and wife. But here we're focusing on the duties of the wife as well, many of whom have more 
uh, responsibility for rearing the children, especially early in their lives. We'll find this on pages 122 through 123 of our study guide. So here, this third objective asks us to identify godly mothers in the Bible who taught their children God's truth. Now, I want you to note that the Bible contains several examples of how godly mothers and grandmothers influenced the lives of their children. First, I want you to read 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 5. You can also take a look at 1 Samuel chapter 1, verses 24 through 28, as well as Hebrews chapter 11, verses 24 to 25 where you will see godly examples of women, mothers and grandmothers, who influenced the lives of their children. And as you review those portions of scripture and your lesson, I'd like to ask, what is the golden thread connecting each of these stories? As you look through those scriptures that I've given you, you will see that the seed of God was planted in tender hearts at an early age, and in time, it bore fruit. So I'd like to remind you, those of you who are parents, that God holds you responsible for learning the truths of God's word and fostering a personal relationship with him. And as long as children are under your care, parents are responsible for their children's spiritual development as well. So there must be daily Bible reading and prayer for the children to participate in and regular opportunities for them to hear their parents praising God's faithfulness. The next section of our lesson talks about one of the duties of a wife is to serve outside of the home. You see this on pages 123 through 124 of your study guide. Here, this fourth objective asks us to identify two conditions necessary for a wife to serve outside the home. And so let's begin by asking this question. What two conditions are necessary for a wife to assume responsibilities, whether work or of a social nature, outside the home? As you review that portion of your lesson, prayerfully you will see that she must be able to organize her work at home and she must have her husband's help in doing so. So I want you to identify some of the ways in which women serve outside the home in their community. I want you to think about that and write down some of the ways in which you see women serving outside the home in their community. So we've looked at lesson seven of our course, Building a Christian Family, Marriage at Home. We've been discussing the duties of a wife we talked about that she is to love her husband by loving and respecting him, by being faithful to him, that she is to help make the home a happy home, by being an example in word and deed, by being a good homemaker, by careful spending. We also see that she is to love and train the children, and what her responsibilities are if she serves outside of the home. So in conclusion, I want you to discuss the following situation that I will give you right now. Here's the example. Let's say Sally, a Christian, who is married to Jim, who verbally abuses her and even threatens her physically whenever the topic of money or religion is brought up. Jim is a good provider, but he resents his wife, spending so much time in church and becomes angry when he finds out 
that she has tithed or given off the income from her part-time job. Sally's three children range in age from 8 to 16. And the oldest, Mike, is no longer interested in church, though he attends, but only after arguing about it. The younger children fight constantly. Sally is at a loss as to what to do to make her home a happy one. Using this scenario, how would you counsel Sally? Now there's a second exercise sheet that may help us here. You, you have a second exercise sheet that your instructor will distribute to you and those who are studying independently will post to your student account or will send to you directly. So the second answer sheet will sum up the duties of a wife. And so it has to, wives complete this exercise sheet during the lesson after this lesson. Also, the men and singles may use this exercise sheet as a reminder for praying for wives they know to be, be the kind of wives that God intends them to be. So even though these duties are biblically given to wives, husbands need to support their wives, just as in the last lesson, wives need to support their husbands. And singles, you can see this sheet to remind you of how to pray for wives, that they will know how to be the kind of wives that God intends for them to be. Now, at this part of our lesson, I want each of you who may have wives, I want the husbands to write down two or three things that they could do during the coming week that will communicate their love to their spouse. If you are a single, you can write down the name of a couple whose marriage you will pray for this week. And I also want to encourage husbands and wives to pray for each other and with each other that God's kingdom would come into their lives and that his will for them would prevail. If their love for one another has grown cold, they should pray that God would rekindle their love for one another. So there we have concluded lesson seven, the duties of a wife. Now let me give you the assignment for our next lesson, which will be lesson eight, and it will discuss the duties of children. And as we think about that topic, let me ask you this question. What are the duties of children? And here's a memory verse for you. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 1 through 3, which read, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise, that it may go well with you, and that you may enjoy long life on the earth. Thank you, students, for allowing me to come into your homes on this evening. May the Lord use this lesson to help wives, to help singles who are considering marriage, the women to understand the duties of a wife and help young men or those who are married or husbands to know how to pray for and support their wives. And may God continue to bless you as we go through the rest of this course. In Jesus' name, may the Spirit of God help us to learn, to know, and to grow. Amen.